Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be in for a long one, so you might want to pause this and get a drink or a snack now. We are going to be doing a full Copic colored scene card today using these beautiful digital images from Sweet November Stamps. So I lay out all of my scenes in an app called Adobe creative cloud. I have it on my iPad and I find that it's easiest just to take my downloaded images, set them up in that app and I have my canvas set to four and a quarter by five and a half so I know that it'll fit an A2 size card. Then once I have my scene set up the way that I want, I save it as um, an image. I put it into um, like a Google Word doc and then I can scale it and print it from there. So once I have my image printed out, which is what I have here, I combined the Flight of the Fairies, two of those images, um, Rosalind, Rosalinda and Audrey. And then I added in three of the digital roses at the bottom and then I put in two more at the back and I changed their transparency so that they look lighter, which will help them appear further back in our scene. So with all that being said, I did go through, I have all of the lids on screen for you guys. So if you want to stop and see what colors I'm using, you should be able to see all of those throughout. Um, I did decide to give the fairy that's a little further up in the air, Rosalinda, she's got a little bit of a more tan skin tone. And so I'm keeping her hair color. They're both going to have these like RV pink hair combos just to change it up. Um, but her hair is also going to be a little darker to suit her skin tone a little more. I really thought that it would be fun since these are fairies. And so realism isn't really a concern um, to give them some fun colored hair. I love that about fairies and mermaid images that you can really kind of customize these and have fun playing around with different color combinations um, and just keep it fun. Like, right, these are supposed to be fun. And um, I really wanted to play with this scene with um, layering different kind of bushes and having that feeling that we've kind of zoomed in on a little garden scene. So that's why I loved having those roses at the bottom nice and large. They just kind of give a fun kind of scale to the whole image and we'll also be adding in some fun background that will also mean that I don't have to stress about a sky because I'm still not loving coloring skies. It's just not my vibe. So for the little, um, her dress and her the flower crown that she's wearing, I decided to really use something that would pop against all of those RVs. Um, so I went with kind of these really light sky blues and I thought they were so pretty. I, they're not colors that I use a lot. I don't grab for those B teen markers, right? Like the 18, 16, uh, 14, 12. I do not use those frequently. Um, and so it was fun again to kind of stretch uh, out of my comfort zone and go with these really beautiful they give kind of that Cinderella dress feel um, to her dress and I love the way that all of these folds of the fabric are drawn in um, for her already so I'm just using those to kind of as a guide to all of my shading just taking my time I did go in and map out my colors with some lighter markers first um, which I don't always do but I'm trying to do more often um, when I'm just like not positive about how, so because that, because her dress kind of swoops up and to the left as it goes to the bottom, I really just wanted to make sure that all of my, um, all of my shadows were going to be in the right spot. So that's why I kind of mapped them out first because it's a different shape than I feel like I'm used to, but I also love that it's a different shape and I think that keeps it super fun. So um, a little uh, life update while I'm coloring. I just want to, again, thank everyone for all of your patience. Anybody who has been coming to my lives over on Pink and Main's channel on Tuesdays and Thursday nights, thank you so much. I've seen so much growth in our lives in the last 
maybe like two months especially and it is just so exciting um, I also want to remind you guys, I'm pretty sure I've said it over here, but I will be at the Simon Says Stamp Create event in May representing Pink and Maine. And I am also going to Go Wild in two weeks, which is like a huge planner event, like paper planners. Um, so if you're going to be there, it's in Texas, Dallas, Texas this year. If you're going to be there, please drop me a DM or leave me a comment because it's my first time going to a planner event. And I know there is some overlap, um, but I, I only know like two people who are going to be there out of like 2,000. So if I have any other online friends or you have a friend that's going, let me know because I need some friends. Um, I am going with my the company I work for, you know, my 9 to 5. Um, so I'll be there with Bloom Daily Planners and... Um, then I'll be at Create in May with Pink and Maine. Both of those things are just so exciting. Um, and I'm also teaching a class for messy crafters. I'm a self-proclaimed messy crafter. So I will be teaching a class with the Paper Crafters Get Organized Summit. The tickets for that are free, just like they are with like the Card Maker Success Summit. But this whole summit is focused on organizing um and my class specifically like I said is for messy crafters um it's kind of a, a some tips and tricks on um how to set yourself up for the easiest cleanup possible so that you're most likely to actually clean up because for me that is the biggest struggle is just leaving an absolute tornado behind me when I'm done and so I figured out some ways to make my cleanup process easier so that I actually clean up. So if you're interested in um, attending that free class, I also have a free worksheet that's part of that class. You can snag your free ticket. I'll put the link in the description down below for you. That is happening the weekend of April um, 19th, 20th, and 21st, I believe, of 2024. Um so yeah, it just uh, other ways you can find me and support me and all those things. And I just appreciate you guys so much. Um, so back to the scene. I did run some BG11 all the way across this background just to have a nice base because I wasn't positive exactly where my these bushes that we're going to create. I wasn't positive where they were going to be and where there might be gaps. So I didn't overthink it. I tried not to stress about it. I just ran one solid layer of that BG11 across the back. And then once we have that all filled in, I'm going to start going in with different green combinations to build out these kind of like bushes. Um, I was inspired to do this scene from some cards that Amy Young from Sweet November Stamps did on her live where she did these kind of layered trees and stuff. And so I wanted to see if I could use the same techniques of like a very zoomed out large forest that she created and instead make it a super zoomed in little garden, like a little rose garden with some shrubbery. That was the vibe. And I love how it turned out. Definitely a different kind of scene for me. But like I said, um, doing it this way made it so much less stressful for me and made the whole process a lot more fun. I know I shouldn't be stressing out about doing those skies, but some days I just literally don't feel up for it. <laughs> so if that's what it means is that I have this in my back pocket now as another fun way to create a scene, then I'm very fine with that. So I went in first with that really light green marker and just kind of scrubbed in this kind of rough shape of a large bush. And then I went in with my G94 and started adding in some texture. So these are the places where the sunlight is just not hitting the leaves the same because, you know, different parts are protruding, different parts are laying over each other or overlapping, and those would all create shadow. And then down below those roses, there would be shadow. So just kind of breaking up this blob. And then I'm blending out that G94 with a G24. And that's just kind of expanding those shapes, softening them up, um, 
just kind of, it diffuses them, right? It kind of softens the edges of that color and kind of expands those shadow areas as our medium shade. And then I'm gonna go over all of that again with that lightest G43 marker one more time. Uh, I'm not gonna completely cover everything, but while I'm blending that out um, and just kind of leaving little space here and there, it's gonna kind of soften the overall feel and still leave some extra bright spots. So it's like a nice way to add a, a highlight color, like a fourth highlight color, without having to actually use a fourth color. The areas where the um, 43 overlaps itself will be just slightly darker than the areas where you just did your base color. So for this bush on the left, we're gonna start with that super, super pale um, YG. And then we're going to go in with YG63 and start kind of building up that shadow where this bush kind of tucks behind that first one that we drew. Um, I'm not positive that, you know, this is like the absolute best way to do this, but it's how I experimented and kind of created it for myself. I did want the this bush on the left to be a little bit lighter than the one on the right because it's further back in our scene. And generally speaking, the further back something is, the less saturated and vibrant that color is. So it will be lighter. You're right, your eye sees it as lighter. So having it be a little bit lighter than the one on the right helps to push it further back. But I did still need that shadow underneath. And then I'm adding a third layer across the bottom section right up against those roses. And because I did like a sagier green and then kind of that limey yellow green for this one, I decided to bring in some true green. So I'm sticking with those super saturated like G zeros. So I went in with the G05 as kind of my base and now I'm going in with that G09 for those like darker shadow spots and same thing just kind of flicking in that color I decided that wasn't quite dark enough so I also pulled in the G29 which will really give that really strong contrast and really pop against everything else that we've done so far and you can see for the ones that are closer up I'm keeping those colors like those darker marks smaller because you would see more detail the closer that those images are versus those the bushes that are further pushed back would be a little bit of a like bigger, more sweeping motion. You wouldn't see individual leaves, right, as you move further back. So I'm also adding some shadow behind that front section, just like we did before. And then I wanted all different colored roses. So the first rose that I went for was that YR68. Um, I love these kind of peachy, the roses that are like yellow and then have peach on the tips. Um, it's been a while, so I feel a little more comfortable uh, talking, especially if you've made it this far, you're, you know, a real one. Um, so I lost my grandma um, in February, and... Um, her favorite roses were those orange, well, the yellow roses in general. But I would always try to bring the yellow roses that had the orange tips because they were just always so beautiful. And so these roses make me think of her. And I think that, you know, losing her and having that experience with my family has definitely affected my um, creativity and my kind of drive to sit down and color. She loved watching my lives. She never missed a live as long as she, you know, wasn't in the hospital or wasn't sick. Um, up until pretty much the very end, she would at least listen in on my lives, um, on my channel and for Pink and Maine. And so it's definitely stung to be live and not have her there listening or for me to call afterwards. Um, but I'm getting to a place where I'm starting to feel a little better about it. Um, but these roses were a little homage to her. So for that second yellow rose that I did that is um, and the further pushed back, 
I also left out that darkest shade that I used the first time around so that my overall shading on that one is lighter as to match and kind of keep in the same mood as the outline, right? Because our outline is softer, it makes sense that our colors are softer as well. And then I pulled out my R um, kind of 30s and 20s that I love for this red rose over here on the left hand side. And we'll also use some of those same colors, but just like a little bit lighter for that pushed back right hand rose, right? So we're kind of like playing with these colors back and forth, kind of flip flopping what side they're on. And then for that center rose, I'm going to use some, I'm going to try to make it look like a cream, right? Like a white rose. Um, I don't know why I said 20s. There aren't 20s. They're all the R30s. But the same thing for this one that's pushed back, we're going to drop that R39. We're just going to exclude that completely. 37 will then become our darkest color. And that will just help again to push those roses further back into the distance because they're a little lighter and less saturated. So I hope all of that part makes sense. Um, just a different way of thinking about it. You don't have to do that, and you don't even have to make them more of a transparent outline. I just think it's a fun way to kind of change it up and make it the work a little easier for yourself, um, adding more depth to your scene. So for this cream rose, I really wasn't positive if this was going to work, but I started with warm gray markers and then I blended that out with a little E53. I figured a white rose would probably be a little warmer versus cool toned. Um, they'd have a little bit more of a creamy base, or at least I was fine with this having that. So 53 and then I went in with some E51 to start blending that out. And I really like how the um, W marker that warm gray kind of added that nice shadow tone. Then I wanted to add some little magic around these fairies. So I went in with this water-based white Sharpie paint pen and I'm just adding little dots and then I'll go in and add little star flicks kind of around that wand and around their wings. Um, I am not an expert at that process in general. Amy is amazing at it <laughs> and I've been inspired to try but let me tell you that it is not my strong suit. So I went in with this little deckled edge um, die and uh, some retired My Favorite Things pattern paper that I'm just desperately trying to use up um, because I can't use it for any of my guest design work with them. I can't use uh, retired product. But I love the gingham, the petite gingham, so I'm just trying to chip away at it. I went in with the Catherine Pooler Dress Blues ink on this beautiful um, Stamping Bella sentiment stamp that says Shine, Sparkle, Glow. And I love how this whole scene came together. I hope this inspires you to break out your markers um, and play with some scene card scene building, um, maybe even with digis if you haven't tried them before. Um, but yeah, I hope that you have the most amazing weekend. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will see you soon. And until next time, happy crafting.